What's up everyone? I'm Venom Mister. This is a Zerg versus Protoss commentary. And this is how to deal with Cannon Rush, an in general video guide. Not a whole lot of map specific stuff going on. This is going to be more how to identify a Cannon Rush and deal with it with concepts that can apply to any map. So, I'm Zerg on the bottom here, Savagewood. My opponent is a guy named Sensei who of course is opening Forge. This is a popular map to cannon rush on this Vanny research station because you can easily wall in with your initial Forge pylon and cannon. Or you, there's a million ways to wall in easily and then just take your expansion. A risk with cannon rush often is, oh you do the cannon rush and then you can lose your natural because the Zerg will often make a lot of lings and then just counter attack you after they lose their hatch. So something, let's just watch my vision. I've seen the probe go in. I've gone hatchery first and elected to make a gas. And he's attacking my hatch. Now, you, I've played a lot of StarCraft 2, over 5,000 games. Usually if someone's going to cannon rush you, they will do their scout and then see, oh, he's expanded and then hide their probe, hoping you forget about it and then you're less likely to want to send units down there and then you don't even know that the cannon is there until it's done and doing damage. It's kind of abnormal for someone who does a cannon rush to sit there and attack because of course I think the whole the whole point of doing harass like that usually is to make the, our units that are under attack noise and irritate you and throw you off your game. So there it is, the cannon finishes. I know that it's cannon rush. Now my pool is about to finish, and I just have a hundred gas. So it's very important that I start making the correct units now to deal with this. Notice I've also taken a third. Now I'm going to pause here. My overlord is about to fly in and see that he has expanded. So I don't want to be super conservative and just be resigned to give up this base. Because he will be ahead if we go two bases to two bases. So what do I know? I know that my opponent has cannon rushed me and that he only made one pylon and one cannon. Now this is greedy on his part. There is a significant chance that I will be able to kill this because it's just one pylon and one cannon even though they are in relatively good spots protected by the edge of the map and minerals. I'll probably be able to hold this so I've played with elusive smoke who you see on my on my channel in our 2v2 series and this guy cannon rushes all the time so I've gotten inside of the head of a cannon rusher and played enough 1v1 ladder to know notice I have perfect drone saturation here and link speed has started so the fact that there's only one cannon and one pylon here is a huge tell and I'll be honest the fact that the guy had enough gall to attack the hatchery kind of leads me to believe that he's an aggressive prick. So if we go to units, I have no zerglings yet. The pool just finished. Of course, I just started zergling speed as soon as I could. So I know that I can't defend this cannon with just these initial four lings, but I know that this idiot is probably going to be cannon rushing this aggressive third that I made. So, considering I can't even defend this and throwing units away preemptively is stupid, I'm just going to take my initial links and check around. Notice how I split them up and do a complete search around and find that he is cannon rushing me. Now, in order to counter this, you want to have one Zergling, or maybe even more focus onto the probe, but at least one out of your control group following onto strictly the probe. And notice he has two cannons coming up. This is what you will see very often, is they focus on the cannons, two cannons in a very good spot, and then one pylon, usually in a location that is just hard to find. The fact that the first pylon is hard to find is far more important than the fact that it is not well protected. What I mean by that is, so right here, if we go to my vision, I can't see that he's cannon rushing me. The fact that he's built his, his pylon up here means that unless I have an overlord fly over here or I have a hunch and look, I'm not going to be able to see this. So this is normal. Usually you don't see, people aren't going to build a pylon here and then a cannon here where you can see it without having an overlord and see it with the fog of war the building hatch provides. 
So the fact that I was able to deduce this is what tipped me off to it. Now this pylon is a little bit against the wall, but it's not like jammed up close within a bunch of buildings where I can't attack it. And this is due to the fact that this guy sees that there's no overlord over my third. So what am I thinking? I'm thinking this guy is counter-rushing my third, I need to stop it as quick as possible, and then I also need to save my natural, because if I save my natural I'll be really far ahead. Even though my opponent has an expansion, he only has taken a gateway, a cyber, and a gas. He's not te he doesn't have a stargate or a twilight or anything yet. So let's see what happens. He's going to build two cannons. Now these two cannons, if these finish, these would be a total bitch. Because they were stuck up behind these minerals. So at this point it's very important to start killing the probe. Because you don't want this probe to build like three pylons. And then trap one in the back corner. And then you're in a position where really the Protoss can just cancel one pylon while you kill it. So the fact that the probe d is dead allows me to kill the pylon, rendering the two extra cannons useless, meaning he has to cancel them. So right here, this hatch is very low. Now, a really good cannon usher might just focus fire this hatch, but at this point the hatch is so low and I have enough lings because I've been building them throughout the entire early game and I fixed my rally to go into the main so I never lose lings for free. I had so many lings and the queen, of course, that I built very early on, that meant that I was able to keep the hatchery alive. Because the Protoss, when there's only one cannon and one pylon, the Protoss has to make the decision. Well, I kind of have to fight back versus the few attacking units, because if I don't, the, the one cannon, one pylon combo just dies very quickly. So that's why you saw, that's why you saw that he didn't just focus the hatch, because if he didn't, the cannon would have died very quickly. So I'm pausing again. Early on within the game, I thought that there is a very good chance that I could lose this natural. I think that if he's cannon rushing down here, I'll be able to hold, but then it'll be two base versus two base because Vanny Research Station, there is this pocket natural, and it's very easy to defend at the top of this ramp. And I've peeked in with an overlord here and saw that he has one cannon and a pylon on this high ground. So this screams to me that it's vulnerable to Baneling Bust. And before I even can scout this, I know that there's a chance that I'm going to make a lot of lings and that the lings are going to be useless. A huge, classic, quintessential crux of Zerg versus any race that's cheesing is that Zerg will have to build a lot of Zerglings to try to hold the early game cheese. And if they take severe damage, they have a lot of Zerglings. However, in versus Terran and versus Protoss, a wall-in can be built to render these Zerglings useless. This has been alleviated in Legacy of the Void with Dropper Lords being buffed. However, I was highly aware of the possibility of this occurring. Highly aware of the possibility of having to play two base versus two base due to this one cannon behind the mineral line. So I went ahead and made this Baneling Nest. It's also worth noting that a lot of times in your build, if you don't know how much your opponent is committing to cannon rushing, you don't know whether or not you should pull off gas. For instance, when I saw this cannon at my natural and went down to my third, I was kind of guessing based on what I saw and based on ladder experience that he would be doing another cannon rush there was a slight chance that he could have just been taking double super early double gas at home and teching to two star po starport excuse me stargate oracle or something stupid so you never know for sure and that means that i didn't know whether or not i should stop mining gas furthermore i would have had to pull off and have extra drones like 18 out of 16 which is annoying and you don't want so I used a little bit of extra gas I was mining to make a baneling nest. This means I know that I'm going to make zerglings to hold, and regardless of not, or excuse me, regardless of whether or not I hold the push or take damage, the baneling nest can be useful aggressively and defensively. So at this point I've held, but I have a lot of banked up gas and not a whole lot of drones, honestly. I'm behind about 10 workers. But I had a lot of banked up gas, so I've peeked in, 
and usually people who play like this aren't the kind of players who play safe, so I don't think he has a century. Notice I'm going to peek in here to double check. To pause really quick. One important thing, whenever you do builds like this, hotkey all of your banelings onto one key by holding control and clicking them down here at the bottom. And then you'll have only the banelings selected. Then you can hit shift 2 to bind them all to 2. And then you can go back to 1 for your entire army hotkey. And then use your pinky kind of in a in a bar formation. If you play guitar, it's similar to some chords. And you hold down shift and control at the same time. And left click the bands and suddenly your control group is only lings. And then you can hit control 1 and that will reset that control group to just the lings. Because whenever you hit control and hit 1 through 9, the, you know, the control group button, that's a brand new group. Shift is your adding. So to, re to recap, you have your whole army, you do your straight finger, you hold down shift and control at the same time, left click the bands in the bottom here, that will select all of the bandlings out of that one main army control group and then you can hit control one to rebind the hotkey and then all your lings will be on the hotkey. Now it's important to not just A move everything up the ramp like a retard because then you give the Protoss the valuable time to do some defensive measures. If we go to units he does have a mothership core but he thinks I don't even know it just finished down here so it's he's not even expecting this bane bust which is fine if we go to his vision he didn't scout the baneling nest because of course his one probe went down there to cannon rush that's another thing whenever players do this one probe cannon rush oftentimes they are going to forsake the scouting that they would usually do in the mid game with the probe mid early game whatever so here the key factor is that we're going to have our banelings and lings on two different hotkeys and we're going to micro our banelings in such a way where they move up all the way to the right location and blow down this pylon. Now it is abnormal for Protoss players to have multiple pylons powering the very front of their buildings because the Nexus gives supply and usually they want to build pylons close to their bases because that's the easier way macro wise it's the easier way in the mid game because if they build a robo it's much easier to reallocate chrono boost to structures sitting by your nexus and that's just because you can use camera hotkeys or what have you the point is is a protoss player normally isn't going to like build their first three pylons at the front door that means that if you kill this first valuable pylon their structures will shut down so I click my main army control group back because I don't want to idiotically have all of my lings blocking my bands. Right here a good player would have just move commanded their bands into the mineral line and probably outright won the game. But it can be tricky because you're trying to get your main army going and I just kind of suicided some bands there for free. Now here it's important to not take a bad fight and not get caught in the pylon overcharge. So remember, you have the advantage here as Zerg with all of these lings. And there is a huge decision right now going. Notice that we're even in workers after I've killed about six workers. Actually killed 12 workers, wow. So here we see I'm on three bases. I have three base economy. I've only taken one gas and they have a queen at two bases. This means that I can make a lot of drones. It's very important in StarCraft 2 to know that a lot of times, especially with Zerg, it's better to just half-heartedly pressure your opponent and make them feel really worried and just make a ton of workers on the back foot than it is to outright kill them. And here we see that I'm making four drones. Some players would have just made pure lings and said, okay, his front door has been broken down. If I make pure lings, I can still kill him. Now, I still have eight lings on the way, and I'm going to continuously micro these units. But it's very important as Zerg, whenever you have a base advantage like this and you do damage to your Protoss opponent that shuts down buildings, you can make a lot of drones and get ahead that way. You don't have to keep making attacking units run across the whole map that doesn't have any creep and try to attack 
because whenever you're coming off of cheese like that, you're really not going to have a ton of extra queens in ZVP early game because you really want to have the injects. You're not going to have extra queens to spread creep. So here, let's see what I do. Always want to focus the century whenever it comes out because one century can just deny your push infinitely. And here he had a valuable pylon that was powering two gateways. And notice that even while I was dealing damage to the probes, I had a few lings dedicated to killing that pylon. A mothership core cost 50 energy to do photon overcharge, so whenever a mothership core comes out, it has one overcharge in the tank. This is valuable to know because if you damage a pylon that is valuable both defensively and infrastructure wise, then you can force the Protoss player into sloppy, stupid overcharges. And that's kind of what I did. I got the pylon halfway down, and by the time he got his mothership core over, he just had to overcharge because the pylon wasn't a good spot. And then I just killed it. So here I'm trying to do a similar thing, but he warps into a depths very quickly, Sensei. And notice the overcharge goes out in the main. He did a, another panic overcharge in the main. So here he's desperately trying to make a wall and I'm making drones at home and since I'm continuing to mine gas I'm in a weird spot because it was a cheese game I don't have as many drones as I want but I don't want to pull off gas because I still want to try to tech but I'm in a rock I'm between a rock and a hard place cuz I want to I've made some extra drones because I I've identified that I've dealt enough damage at the front door where I can keep pressuring and potentially win the game. But I've also recognized that I don't want to get myopically focused on making pure attacking units. I can very easily win the game by just making a nice drone backbone. And at this point, I'm at 34 drones. My opponent's at 15 workers. There's a few things that were very important that I did. I didn't fight all of his probes while getting completely trapped in a corner and stuck in photon overcharge and with a mothership core shooting at me or I didn't fight with a lot of attacking units attacking me while I attacked probes and I made sure that I shut down some of his production so he could not stabilize. These are all factors that you should try to replicate whenever you play aggressively with lings. Now it's worth noting that the fact that I've made drones basically seals the deal for me this game. If I had made pure Ling, it would have been harder for him, but at the same to on the at the same time, as long as he rewalls and makes a sentry and a mothership core, there's a very good chance that he can hold, especially if I miss micro. A good player can hold with a once he had like notice Warp Gate has finished, so at this point he can kind of warp in sentries at the top of his ramp, and one sentry at the top of the ramp, of course I don't have Roach Tech, I'm on Roach Bane, or Ling Bane. Photon Overcharge mixed with Force Field can spell the end to my Ling Bane aggression, and really, I would have been limited just to these couple Zerglings in the main. So that's another reason why drones are good. If you're playing against someone who's really good and they re-wall and make a sentry, suddenly you're locked out if all of your lings die in the main and they can just hold with a force field at the top of the ramp very easily. So, I'm teching the lair. This will allow me to pretty much go into anything I want. This lair is huge and while I build this lair, I'm free to tech or I'm free to consider which tech I want to go while I make drones. So at this point, it's very important to try to break the wall down, especially the pylons. Notice I have the lings attacking the important structures and then I've held shift and then an A move inside. This means that the lings will focus on the structure that I want and then as soon as they kill it, they will break in and attack something else. So whenever you're being aggressive with lings and they have a mothership core, you always want to make it where the mothership core has to move away to try to deal with the lings. The best way to do this is to go for the probes and this means that I can run in at the front door with more lings and he has to always be worried about that so he has to keep his attacking units there. So he has to ferry his mothership core all the way into the main and I kill the pylon that was drastically similar to the one that was in the main. Notice these aren't even warp gates yet because of how badly he's been harassed. 
And here I choose to try to kill probes. I've made so many drones at home that I honestly think that, well, I can just try to go for probes here, and judging by the fact that I see there's no workers in his main, if I just kill a handful of workers here, I'll be far enough ahead to win. My lair has finished, and I've been banking gas all game, so I can immediately put down a spire here. Since I've been rampaging throughout Sensei's base, I know, unless he's doing some sort of ludicrous proxy, that he doesn't have any sort of tech. He doesn't have a stargate on the way, he doesn't have a dark shrine on the way. He doesn't have eight gateways on the way with warp gate, and he just leaves. And that's the game. So, why did he leave? Well, he knew that he didn't have any tech. He had five gateways and warp gate. I had all three bases taken, and a huge economy. Now, even if I had made pure Ling and just killed him with 22 workers, he would have been in dire straits. But if he had stayed in the game and tried to remake workers, eight mutas would have flew into his base and killed him. So, if that helped you deal with Cannon Rush in any way, subscribe for more.